this is the fresh I can use it. I mean like this. I don't need a fix. Good evening everybody. <coughs> so my name is uh, Cora Reddy and uh, yeah so this is my is it audible for the back? So I recently authored this book called uh, High Profit Trading Patterns. You're not going to make money by reading the book, so just like the publisher's choice. And I'm also a co-founder in one of the stock screening website. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. So, just <coughs> so I'm a co-founder in one of the stock screening website called stocksiq.in. And uh, that's a brief about me. So how many people are familiar with backtesting? And what kind of platforms do you use? So, Metastock, Ami Broker. Sorry? Falcon. Falcon has a backtesting. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, why do people, uh, why do, why, what is the need for you to backtest a strategy? Okay. How profitable? Okay, so yeah, there, there are like few reasons. So whenever anybody uh, tells some strategy, like okay, I mean the stock is bearish just because it broken down 200-day moving average, or it's bullish because it's uh, gone about 200-day moving average, or anything, don't believe in that. So especially because it's a stock market and test and uh, take out the data and then do that. So that's the first thing. And when it comes to the market, I have this. Uh, always the saying, I don't believe in the God, so I believe in the data or whatever. So the basic, uh, why do people test to backtest uh, a strategy is, yeah, just go and feel whether it's really profitable in the history, and if it is really profitable in the history or historical data, okay, at least you can trade because there is a, a historical data shown some profit or some advantage or some trading edge, uh, <coughs> and that's the reason you backtest a strategy. And similar analysis is like, yeah, I mean, basically when you are buying a car, you, you test drive. I mean, you take your wife, you take your kid, and you take everybody, and then finally, then only you go and buy or go and place the order for the car. So why don't you do the same stuff for your trading strategy? <laughs> and the... The reason that I basically uh, use Excel rather than your Ami broker or Metastock or any other platform is most of the parameters, uh, the backtesting parameters which I would be describing uh, in a while, uh, what uh, the rationale behind each and every uh, backtest uh, performance summary parameter and what it means and what is the values that you should be looking at uh, uh, to reject the strategies <coughs> uh, is, uh, yeah, so when you go to Ami broker, so you basically, if you want to tweak a formula within that Ami broker, let's say you want a max drawdown to be, um, like just for the fun of it, like increase it by one and a half x, right? Or uh, you want your profit factor uh, to be little uh, less than uh, the actual profit factor, let's say. You do that by removing top uh, three profitable trades. So all those tweakings, you cannot really do it so easily in the Ami broker, unless otherwise you know the internals or, or I have no idea, I mean, how you can do them in the Metastock or any other platform. So, okay, I'm, <coughs> okay. So that's the reason I basically try to use the Excel and basically, again, Excel is simple to use or something like that. Okay, so it's, it's not like, a, <coughs> let's see, I mean, uh, is it audible now? Okay. I would keep it close to the mouth. Okay. <laughs> so the reason that I use Excel is, yeah, if I want to tweak any of the uh, parameters the way that I want, uh, in a sense, my aim is basically to reject the strategies, not to uh, take any of the strategies thinking that it's going to work. So, and by tweaking, so I'll tell you an example. So where I want to tweak or try to reject those strategies. So that is a little easier for me to do in Excel. And apart from that, uh, you, you always can uh, feel the data in Excel. So it's not like I'm trying to promote, but yeah, it's there in your computer, so use it rather than trying to 
uh, get an, uh, a tool where you do not know what is your coding or you want to tweak any of the parameters. <laughs> and uh, the few steps that um, you need to take care when you start uh, doing any back test is okay, the first thing is you download the data, and the second thing is just because you download the data just from BSC or NSC, do not trust the data, try to clean it. There is a uh, few. I am talking about BSC Sensex data which comes from BSC India website itself. There are a few problems, I do not remember the dates but they are like in 98, 97 where they do this mistake. The mistake of uh, so the mistake is uh, the high is any intraday high has to be high of all the rest of the four fields. If not equal at least where open equals to high equals to low equals to close if it is a um, a what do you call as upper circuit stock right at the open. So if the high is not the highest in those four fields then there is something wrong with the data. So how do you clean is either you strike off that data or, or maybe like uh, get the previous data and then just use the same stuff uh, the previous data. Similar is applicable for the low, low has always has to be low and this especially happens to some of the thinly traded stocks. So when you uh, do not trade, when the stock is not traded for that day for any reasons, it could be in an upper circuit or it is thinly traded stock. Uh, the one technique that we use is take the previous days and then just uh, fill the same data. I mean like uh, today is 25th right, so take 24th October's data and then use the same OHLC even for the 25th uh, if it is not supplied by the exchange and put volume as 0. And then uh, the next step is basically uh, you are writing a strategy, so you write in one uh, column or whatever you develop and the next thing is uh, so you compare that against the future returns, so that is what we call as a dependent and independent variables. So your independent variable is tomorrow's returns or two days, next two days returns or next five days returns or whatever it could be or tomorrow's open. <laughs> this actually I will try to show in Excel but I do not, I cannot uh, really uh, say that the back end guys can see it but yeah they can always download the Excel sheets or I will try to pass on if you can send me an email or something like that. But I will try to do this exercise in an excel sheet as well. And so once you write your strategy on one line and the next uh, independent variable is always like your future returns. What is your returns for tomorrow or, uh, or after 2 days or after 5 days or if you are a long term guy maybe after 20 days or after quarter or whatever after a particular event has happened. Event could be stock going below 200 day moving average or above moving average or whatever strategy you could think of. <laughs> so these are a couple of important uh, uh, factors that I believe uh, when you are uh, doing a back testing. <laughs> One is definitely the number of years uh, analyzed. So for the indices we try to go at least a minimum of uh, 10 years so that you have at least uh, a 1 or 2 cycles of your going up and down. It's I mean basically that is it is observed like in 10 years you at least have like a 50 percent up move and 50 percent down move. So you are basically going through the both a bull run market and a bear run market. So keep it at least for 10 years and if you are doing for the stocks because you are doing on a back of uh, a set of stocks so keep it at least a minimum of 4 years so that the same is applicable. Regardless of the year uh, the important point is yeah how many trades that you get. So you make a minimum of 25 trades or 100 trades or something like that. So there is a concept called accuracy or whatever statistical accuracy which is basically 1 by 1 minus uh, sorry 1 minus 1 by square root of the sample size. So let us say your sample size is 100 so 1 by square root of 100 is uh, 0.1 right. So you basically are looking at 90 percent accurate accuracy, now I am not talking about the accuracy of the strategy but accuracy of the sample size. Let us say you bring it down to 25 rates. So that is like 80 percent accurate data or accurate sample in terms of the statistics and if you bring it down to 16 it becomes like 75 percent accurate I mean the whole sample size. So you keep it somewhere in the range of 16 to 25 at least a minimum 
in the last 10 years or whatever, or whenever you have written a strategy and then it has given a signals, uh, keep that at least 25 or 16 and below that um, it is it's, it's like little difficult to gas. So keep it at least a minimum of 25, the more sample the better and the sample if it increases beyond 100 or 200 that means it is already known to a big gun so you do not need to replicate that. There is already somebody is running and its profit potential would have come down uh, drastically. Uh, thinking like you are a Soros, you are happy with even 25 percent winning rate uh, of trade. So keep it like somewhere 60 percent uh, so that you at least feel confident in the strategy. <laughs> and then the average profit per trade and mid profit per trade. So there are two ways of looking at average per trade again. So you, you, this is a like a simple thing. Uh, so when if at about 2500 or 3000 levels back in 2008 in October, a 50 point move is like about 2 percent. Now it is running at about 6000 or 5000 odd. So a 50 point move is like a percentage. So the way to look at this look into terms and look in percentage terms as well. <laughs> and little uh, a critical thing in a sense the median trade. So sometimes whenever uh, you look uh, for any of the long only strategies, right? So because the market is always up, almost 50 percent of the days, the market is up. So you basically just buy, buying uh, Nifty every day gives you about point, um, close to 0.1 percent. So you are actually right about 55 percent of the time just by blindly buying every day. Uh, look at your trades distribution so that your median, which is the like let us say you have 20 trades or 25 trades, so the middle of the trade, so it is like uh, yeah just uh, the median, so look so median of the trades is also in our favorable, look for a positive expectancy in the median as well. And see in our back testing uh, results, both of them are at least covering your brokerage charges otherwise there is no uh, point in any of the strategy both average profit per trade like let us say 0.3 per or 0.4 percent a minimum so that at least you feel confident in that strategy. The largest single uh, trade and largest single winning trade. So my take on largest uh, trade yeah, basically by tweaking some of the parameters you have false confidence that you are on the right side on that 20 percent upper move. There is a probability that 50 percent of the people on that day has gone short as well. So yeah, you could somehow avoid by tweaking one or two parameters even if you are building a short only strategy right. So you on May 19 somehow you could tweak and then make it as a long only system. So do not pay too much attention to largest single losing trade in your back uh, <laughs> results. I am sure a double of that is going to occur in the future and the reverse is applicable for the largest winning trade which is if your trade uh, if your back test results has given that particular trend up move, do not think it is going to happen again. So just knock that off. So that is the importance of largest single losing and largest uh, single trade in the back test. <coughs> and again so another psychological uh, uh, whatever like impact the maximum uh, number of consecutive losers and maximum number of consecutive winners. So maximum consecutive winner sorry losers uh, I am sure you might be having your own methodologies on how to handle that but the maximum consecutive winners is what you need to pay attention to. So when you hit that streak actually in live trading uh, don't shy or do not disbelieve that system. So the moment like when you hit like four trades in a row winning trades you yourself will start doubting the system is it fluke or am I on or luck is my side or something like that. So do not uh, have a when it hits a, a winning trade or winning streak because that is where most of the people um, uh, falter or something like that. Anyway the max losing trades also falter but that is that happens but the problem is yeah when you are getting a winning streak people do not take, uh, take trades and think yeah, either the system is fluke or some luck is coming something like that. So just pay attention to so even if you are let us say even on a, a 15 winning streak 
uh, uh, follow the system and again if you are happy in the back test ok fine that is fine. <laughs> a similar analogy would be like your uh, India versus Australia match in uh, 2003 final. So, everybody might be thinking uh, that Australia has won 16 sorry 17 times in a row now is the chance for India to win the match but so it is yeah Australia is not going to stop just because they won 17 matches right. So, they have to continue that streak. So, that is that is analogy is what you use hit that max uh, consecutive winning trades. So, the next thing is uh, profit factor. So, this is just need to pay little close attention to it. So, just because your gross profit divided by uh, gross loss um, in uh, so normally it does not happen in the indices the indices does not move more than 100 percent in a 4 years either up or down it is rare. But in stocks yeah they move uh, 500 percent or even 1000 percent. So, what happens in those times is like let us say assume the stock is at 20 rupees and assume the now stock is at 100 rupees. So, your trades uh, the winning trades 100 rupees carry a lot more weightage than the winning trades uh, at uh, 20 rupees. So, it is yeah but it is still good figure to look at it the profit factor, but again so uh, directly believe in that when you are doing the testing on the stocks whereas in this it is fine. So, you look for some other ratio which I am going to tell in the next slide <coughs> and then so this is the outlier adjusted factor. So, tweak that profit factor uh, to your own coming. So, this is like you take uh, so you are building a long only strategy system. So, by tweaking like 3 or 4 factors it, it happens so that you are long on uh, that May uh, 19 or May 18 2009. So, remove that trade it is not going to happen in future uh, and then recalculate the profit factor again. Or if you want to be more pessimistic you yeah, remove like a top 2 3 a top 2 trades top 3 winning trades yeah or as a rule of thumb what is uh, 20 trades we remove one largest winner. So, if we have like 40 trades in the back testing results so we remove top 2 winning trades. So, that we get little uh, like we are trying to be more pessimistic we, our <coughs> basic aim is to reject the strategy rather than just uh, trying to get one more strategy into our trading arsenal or something like that. <coughs> the max drawdown and drawdown in percentage. So, this is like yeah so you started with uh, let us say uh, 1 lakh capital or in your points nifty points yeah started at 5000 points. So, it goes and comes down the highest to lowest is what you are uh, this uh, drawdown. So, it can be calculated in your points if you keep adding on points or on your purchase value. So, it is again a uh, something to look into. So, the moment you have a bank uh, in your test results a drawdown of 40 percent or 50 percent and it is bound to going to happen right in the future also the system has given you 40 percent. Uh, drawdown in the last 4 years. So, obviously, it is going to give even more than that or something like that. So, just look whether you have that many stamina to uh, recover from those kind of systems. So, yeah like try to avoid uh, systems which does not suit your personality. Personality could be yeah, I can handle only 25 percent drawdown or something, but yeah if the system is failing in the back test itself uh, like showing a 50 percent drawdown. Do you really have that uh, cap to run that system or mental strength in the future. So, that is one thing which you look into that. <laughs> this is uh, uh, what you call as a equivalent of uh, profit factor which is uh, that right. So, when you take a stock which has moved from 20 to 100 rupees in the last 4 years or 5 years it obviously tweaks. Uh, or it gives more weightage to the winning trades at 100 rupees because even at 100 rupees if it goes by 1 rupee it is like 1 percent whereas in uh, 20 rupees for the 1 percentage move it has to move like 5 percent which is a little difficult. So, the percentage at uh, a while ago stock is trading at a lower uh, price to now. So, you keep the you play averages. So, take average winning trade percentages divided by average loss percentages. So, that you get a better feel of um, uh, whether the strategy is working in percentage terms as well. So, 
basically look for a strategy. I mean, just basically, I mean, outlier adjusted profit factor of more than two, a minimum. Otherwise, I won't be trading that system. So I'm not a, uh, a fan of like trading the systems which have 1.5 or 1.75 or something like that because they might break in the future when you have a huge gap up or gap down against you. So look for something more than two. And payoff ratio, I don't have a, 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 a hard number, but yeah, I guess look for at least 1.5 plus in your favor. So you will draw profit in terms of the whole percentages divided by the gross loss in terms of whole percentages has to be more than 1.5. Otherwise, you don't have really a trading edge in that system in putting in trades. <laughs> and again, this way, I really don't know how many of you know how the account size required is calculated by me broker. Account size required for a trading strategy. Yeah. Sorry? Delta. Yeah, so, so the people have that uh, little mistake. So they take this max drawdown, right? So let's say the system has 24 maximum drawdown. And uh, let's say to trade the contract, you require about a lakh. So 1 lakh plus 20% more uh, drawdown. So you take like 1 lakh 20 is what my account size required to trade this system into the future. So the problem with that is, I mean that gives you uh, a false sense in terms of the return. So, and some of the platforms can go to an extent, yeah, keep just that 20% as a stop loss and then calculate the future returns. So the problem is, yeah, you start with 1 lakh, uh, including your drawdown plus the minimum margin money required to trade the contract. And then suppose you started compounding, compounding, and then in four years, uh, assume you have like have a 40%, sorry, um, yeah, 40% returns, and then you do the compounding. It just gives you a false sense so that you become uh, overnight uh, millionaire or like a millionaire in a couple of years. So uh, don't use the leverage, and don't use the, just the raw start on picture. So just make it as pessimistic as possible and calculate your account size required. So the minimum that I use, uh, figure that I use as account size required is for an FT contract, I assume like, okay, forget about my back test, so I assume that I want to be wrong on 10 of those largest swings. It will be like that 600 and plus point move. I want, to, I want my trading strategy to have failed in the back test. Yeah. And then like top 10, and then take that amount. So it could come like, uh, 600 into 10, right? So about like 3,000 odd. Add that as your max drawdown, and then add your requirements, and then add that uh, account size required, so that you get a realistic picture in what the future returns are going to be. So the luck factor is basically, yeah, this is largest winning trade by the average trade. So it's just like yeah, all these numbers are given by most testing platforms, right? So when you get a doubt, okay, what is the number that I should be looking at? Yeah, look into, you are just buy and hold. Uh, so like buy and hold of, buy every month and uh, the Nifty contract and run a back to strategy. And then you see what this figure, the plain buy and hold strategy versus your trading strategy. And you see that your trading strategy performs better than the buy and hold strategy. So I don't have a number for luck factor. So, so when I don't have a number to so I go and compare that with my buy and hold strategy for the Nifty. And then recovery factor. So this is basically uh, how, how, how much time or what's the number that you put on. It took cover from the max drawdown picture back into your normally. Let's say you started 1 lakh, dropped down to 80,000. So you lost like 20 percent. And then how much, uh, uh, what quantifiable number to measure that recovery factor. So it's absolute value of net profit divided by the maximum drawdown. So the whole total net profit for the strategy divided by the max drawdown. Again, when you get into this dilemma of, okay, what is this number should be, compare this with buy and hold strategy of that 
index or whatever you are uh, back testing. And this is uh, the most important uh, factor that many of the hedge funds or uh, some of the guys use the marketing vehicle. They don't use my returns were like 12 percent last year or 12 percent consistently in the last three years or four years. So they quote this sharp ratio as their marketing vehicle. It's complex, but to simplify, it's like your average divided by standard deviation. So just because it's written by Nobel laureates and uh, people make it complex, no, it's not complex. It's like what's average return per year and divided by the standard deviation of the returns. So what it tells is how smooth is your equity curve, and you can see, yeah, it's a good strategy. I look for yeah anything point above. 0.5 is a good uh, trading strategy if you are to trade in the uh, uh, in live trading. Better than one, so it's 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 a very uh, it's a little difficult to find the strategy, but yeah, so you try for a strategies which is more than 0.5 or more than one. And if you are trading bonds or something like that, look for a short ratio of more than 16 or 25 because it's easy to get a. A, 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 a sharp ratio of at least 5 or 10 if you are trading your strategies or testing any strategies on bonds or something. <coughs> this looks like, just don't read the, uh, uh, I mean it's like whatever is the math. So this is called realistic rate of return. So what we are trying to do here is, as an example, let's say, I will just take a simplistic example because it is little difficult to get mentally or uh, square root function. So assume you have like 100 winning trades and 100 losing trades, right? 100 winning trades would have given you like 1% or 100 points and 100 losing trades has given you like 50 points. So it looks good. But just to make it pessimistic because that is not what will work in the, uh, in the future because it worked in the past, uh, you not get the same result. So you are trying to reject the strategy, right? So look for a pessimistic return in the sense your winners, let us say you have like 100 winners, you reduce the number of uh, the winners by square root of that. So 100 square root is, so you assume you got only 90 uh, winning trades in that system rather than 100. And the same thing is you punish your loser that much amount. So let us say your losers were, so my thing is yeah, so you, you have 100 losers. So punishing the losers is 100 plus 100 square root which is 1. So the number of losers you are incrementing by factor. So assume whatever. Yeah. So that you get a, so let us say your strategy has given you 20 percent returns in the last few years. By doing this you are basically bringing down it to realistic term. Uh, so you probably get a 12 percent or, uh, or something like that. The reason why I do this, uh, the prom, I want it to be 50 percent of my actual return. So let us say I started with a lakh and my gross profit blah blah uh, done. So we are up at 2 lakhs, so which is like 100 percent returns in last 4 years or 5 years or whatever. If I do the same thing on prom, uh, the pessimistic returns, I want it to be at least 50 percent so that uh, I get little comfortable uh, feeling. So even though I punish the winners or I reward the losers or whatever. So yeah, make uh, a judgmental thing. So you, you make sure that you have at least 50 percent, uh, I mean the prom ratio should at least be 50 percent of your returns in your back test results. <laughs> and uh, there is lots of uh, uh, people uh, who are basically risk takers, right? So they criticize the sharp ratio. So it punishes on the upside. So we do not like it, blah, blah. And so the alternative to do that is uh, a uh, sorry, the last slide, which is ratio, which only punishes the downside but doesn't penalize the upside. So it's like, yeah, people uh, who don't have a good, I'm not blaming that who don't have a good sharp ratio or something like that. It's like alternate variant. Uh, so sharp ratio has this problem of punishing the win, uh, upside as well. So if it is too much of jump in the upside, again because of that standard deviation, your ratio may not be good, even though your returns are good. So just to avoid that, yeah, people also. Look common ratios. It just does not uh, penalize the upside deviation, it only penalizes the downside deviation. 
and you have something called comma ratio which is sewer annualized returns versus maximum drawdown. So the reason to look at it is like let us say you have a max drawdown. So a max drawdown of 20 percent in our strategy and your annualized returns are only 6 percent. What it means is you are running your strategy in loss for 3 years right I mean it could it could happen in it may not happen in the same sequence but it could happen. Uh, so you look for your annual returns are somewhere at least 1 x or probably something like that to your max drawdown. So if you have like 20 percent max drawdown your strategy should be giving percent returns. This is without leverage. So if you break the leverage then your max drawdown will would have taken that leverage also hit by leverage. So far I mean the important factors that I looked is your outlier adjusted profit factor greater than 2 and your shop ratio greater than 0 0.5 and this is another uh, statistic that we look uh, or uh, take into consideration. So I know how many platforms give this again this is a very simple stuff which is <coughs> so let us say you have like 20 rates in the past uh, your back test uh, results. So you take the average divided by standard deviation and multiply the square root of that sample. So you get a number which is basically t test or you can basically search how to calculate t test. So the idea is to look for at least if you have a 25 sample your t test should be more than 1.6 so that the results are statistically significant either. It should not be random yeah. And this is uh, Ralph Wim's uh, formula for how many shares you want to trade. So this is like optimal F. So again you can search on the net the whole formula. So the problem that I have with that uh, optimal F is yeah just by taking this largest losing trade in the strategy. So use a shocking factor. A shocking factor is yeah that 20 percent move as your uh, loss making strategy. So induce and then calculate optimal F. So ultimately what it gives you is let us say you have 1 lakh and you got a strategy how many shares you want to buy using that uh, optimal F. So if your back test resulting uh, is showing only 5 percent as your largest losing rate then again you get a 4 percent. So use your uh, fudge factor in the sense a shock like 20 percent up move think that as your loss. So induce that and then say this is the amount of shares that I want to And when you are testing uh, uh, any strategy again so this is a little controversial topic. Uh, most of the people do not use SL or again it is it is little shocking but yeah so the problems with by using SL or the stop loss is how do you treat uh, that in the back test. So let us say you have gone on long today and then tomorrow market opens like 5 percent down or whatever so or less than your previous low. So you assume like you want to put a 2 percent stop loss the market itself has opened 5 percent down. So your stop loss gets executed at uh, 5 percent or something. So in your back testing yeah, you would have taken only 2 percent or something like that. So I really do not know the internals of how each back testing platform works but yeah so most some back testing platform got mistake yeah I got executed my stop loss got triggered at 2 percent whereas the market itself opened 5 percent down tomorrow that is the problem. <laughs> and uh, there is this uh, which is called trading volume let us say this happens like for increasing your trade bracket not at 5 to 10 contracts or something like that in nifty. But yeah the moment you uh, increase your ticket let us say to 500 contracts or 1000 contracts and you have an open position let us say I uh, will give an example. So 5500 is your open 5600 is your uh, high for that day and then uh, you gone short for some reason. So and then you put a stop loss at 100 points right and then at 5000 usually at the extreme points of the day right it is only one or two trades which gets executed not the entire volume or whatever. So you assume you have like 10 contracts at 5500 short 5600 is your stop loss and your high is 
5600. So probably only one contract would have been traded there, not even rest of the nine contracts. And those things are, unless otherwise you have tick by tick data, not with your uh, daily OHLC contract. And these two problems. So that's the reason I'm not a fan of using the stop loss. Yeah, again, so this is, as I said, like it's a little commercial um, uh, or it's a little difficult. Yeah, it's a little difficult to test when I say don't use stop loss, use your position sizing to control your uh, back testing or your. <coughs> so instead of stop loss, people use uh, uh, the Kelly or Kelly or whatever. What it, yeah, it might have lots of uh, scaring formula, but what it is is just basically the average returns divided by the square of the standard deviation. Don't use the full leverage. Use always half or one third. So what it is, like let's say you have like one lakh capital, which tells you to trade 100 shares. You used, um, uh, and then your strategy hasn't worked. So you've gone at a loss of 90,000, oh, sorry, 1,000 bucks, or 10,000. So you, tomorrow your capital is about 90,000, right? When again you recalculate, uh, because you are again feeding that into your averages drop down and blah, blah. So you are, uh, instead of 100 shares, it will tell you to only to trade 90 shares or something like that. So your capital is always uh, protected. So it will never become zero. But obviously, I mean, to start with the lag, by the time you come back to 50,000, you might lose interest and quit the business. But yeah, theoretically, it doesn't happen because you are trying to reduce uh, that much. <laughs> and another advantage is, yeah, when you are on a winning streak, it helps you to trade more and more so that you hit that uh, winning streak. So the aim of it is, yeah, it actually grows your portfolio or grows your strategy in optimal way so that, yeah, when you are on hitting on winning streak, you are basically multiplying. When you are on a losing streak, you are reducing your position. So that's the uh, a, a way to use integrated and instead of stop loss. <laughs> and there are uh, any back testing uh, strategies, right? So there are a few problems uh, generally. So the problems that I have seen are basically data snooping by us. I'll, I'll just explain in a minute what it is. And the next, uh, yeah, some of these back testing strategies, right, will give you like profit factor of 20 or something like that. So just don't blindly go by that. So doubt them and then again try to see if there is a mistake if the performance of that backtest strategy is too good. Because it's it's very, very difficult to find a strategy which is like 80% winning trades and all the time profitable with like at least 2% and only a loss of 0.2% in the losing trades and all this stuff. That means you have done something wrong in your calculation. So stop that, take a break and again come back and record it and then see if you get that. So don't trust uh, a too good to be true kind of back test uh, performance results. So the reason that it happens is yeah, you keep on uh, what you call as induce more and more and more rules so that you get an optimal performance. So as a rule of thumb for every year's data which is like 250 days data don't write more than one. Uh, so if you have like a rule in the sense, yeah, today's open price is greater than yesterday's closing price, I'm doing something. That's your rule, one rule. And if you're writing multiple rules like that, so today is full gap down and today is below average, uh, 200 day moving average, you've already written three rules uh, and plus something. So you are reducing the sample and then you can get a good uh, back testing results. Uh, results like uh, today, uh, what is the profit factor of five or something like that. So Go back and again check it. So don't trust the models which are having too high profit factor and like 80 or 90 percent of the winning trade. It means you are actually overfitting and overfitting. So not to do that, yeah, don't write more than one rule for every one year's data. And again, so out of sample testing, that's like you are live trading that. Or there's a ways to uh, do it. Uh, so out of sample testing can be done. Like let's say you have taken um, last four years data, year one, year two, three, year four, and then you have calculated some uh, performance summary. The one thing is, yeah, you could randomize those, uh, the order of those trades and then recalculate. So you basically get uh, some of these uh, parameters in terms of your drawdown will be worse. Say in initial results, your drawdown is like 
by randomizing too many times, right? So you will get at like 25 percent or something like that. So then you, uh, you basically your uh, aim is to doubt that strategy. So uh, either out of sample testing is yeah, don't look at the data for one year. So like let's say you're starting uh, testing from 2000 to 2012. So knock off 2012 and test only up to 2000 to 2011 and then perform a strategy and then look into 2012, rerun the same strategy. So see how it's performing. So it's like one of the ways to avoid that uh, too much curve fitting. <laughs> and not only that, so there's another few uh, mistakes the people do. So just because you can point anywhere, right, in your testing. So instead of open, uh, you can point to high or you can point to low as your exit. So a strategy like buying at close, selling at tomorrow high will 90% of the times will be profitable because there are only like 5 or 4% of the full cap down opens. So just avoid that mistake. So whenever you are too much doing and doing and back testing, right? So when you might be stressed out, so you might be pointing to variables like tomorrow's high as my exit strategy or tomorrow's low as my exit strategy for short only trades or something. <laughs> That's one, yeah, that, uh, quite a few times so just, just be uh, careful in that <laughs> and uh, there is this uh, uh, look ahead bar. so the simple example that I give is so most of the guys tells me uh, whenever Infosys falls 10 percent Nifty also falls by 1 percent right so that's like yeah you don't know whether Nifty Infosys is going to fall 10 percent tomorrow or not so yeah, if it falls, obviously Nifty will fall by 1%. So you write a strategy saying that Infosys falls by 10%, I'm going to short Nifty. So you don't know unless otherwise Infosys falls down. So that's a, a, a small example that I could think of in what do you mean by, what I mean by look ahead bias. <laughs> and then the survivorship bias, this is like let's say it happens in stocks. So I want to buy Nifty 50 stocks based on certain criteria like let's say uh, I want to test a strategy like uh, uh, the stock has fallen 10 percent below 200 day moving average I want to buy and I want to exit five days later I want to run this strategy on the entire nifty, nifty 50 stocks yes they take they assume like current nifty 50 basket is existing in the last uh, four years or so so in 2009 or 2009 your nifty 50 stock is your satyam so you basically need to take on that day what were the nifty 50 stocks and run that test not the ones which are existing today so the ones which are existing today are basically the candidates which are already filtered so you need to go back find out what is the nifty 50 stock in 2009 january 1st and then run that test you continue that and then you see how your strategy is performing on nifty stocks or whatever <laughs> yeah so that's uh, basically a glimpse, I mean, what are the things that uh, people need to look in the uh, back testing of a strategy. Uh, so, yeah, any questions, I will take. Yeah. Uh, there is always a trade-off between optimization and curve fitting. Uh, so, how do you handle that? So, I look for 25 trades, minimum. I look uh, outlier adjusted profit factor more than two or something like that and it's little difficult to if you are doing too much optimization right so your t-test most of my observation is either your t-test and your shop ratio gets hit so th those two things it's little difficult to uh, cheat them uh, with fitting yeah I mean so now yeah the moment you started too much of curve fitting right so one of those ratios will get affected because yeah the moment you are curve fitting basically your profit factor is increasing or your returns are increasing but not uh, it's little difficult to cheat in my uh, experience those t test and shop ratio I mean, so next time you see when uh, you start a trading strategy at like let's say a profit factor of 1.5 added one more parameter so it has gone up to 2 now it looks good but uh, it would have definitely taken a beating in one of those things either the t-test or shop ratio and another thing is uh, yeah so if you are writing I do not have actually a quantification what do you what do I mean by rule in the sense in excel sheet right you put and 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 all and make that as a one rule but yeah 
limit that one line of code right as one rule and have your trading strategy which is not more than six lines of code if you are writing more than six seven then you are basically getting into that game of six lines of code which is six conditions yeah so the moment you are going beyond that that means you are doing something uh, curve fitting See, you go by an assumption in back testing. Say, for example, September month uh, Nifty will be always up historically. Yeah. But uh, last two years back, once September month it crashed like hell. Previous data justified that always September month is a positive one. Based on that historical data, you go on assumption that you can go long or. Uh, but well, if reversal happens and it backfires, I don't know what uh, how to cope in that scenarios. Because history, it, it worked perfectly. Now it's not a guarantee that it should work. Correct. Classic example is September fall. So in that scenarios, how to? Uh, yeah, I don't. <clears throat> so in the September strategy, right? Uh, I wouldn't have traded that particular strategy, or I would have traded based on couple of conditions. Unless otherwise it is like 25 trades, I won't just believe like last four Septembers were good. Uh, 2006, 2007, 2008. I am expecting 2009 also to be good. I will go. No, I am just, I am just guessing. Yeah, I am just so. Uh, you take a sample size of at least 25, then you arrive at one conclusion rather than just taking three or four observations. So that's one way of not looking at it. And obviously, your uh, strategy is going to fail. I mean, uh, all the all the trading strategies are going to stop working. Just and then you can't blame on the back testing results, speaks. So you basically induce and you make it pessimistic, right? So you could have rejected either not by having 25 trades and yeah, even if you're having by 25 trades, that doesn't mean that it's not going to work. You still need to prepare yourself for the largest loss that is going to occur in a month. Yeah, and then you only would trade. So it's like how you do your position size or SL or whatever. Yeah, just because your back testing results are good doesn't mean that your future results are good. The only thing is you yeah, at least perform better in the past so the hope is yeah it might perform if not better at least to 50 percent of its expectations mm. yeah sorry yeah, that's uh, what the, what you call that as a, a drift right so in the Equity markets generally gives six to eight percent uh, annual returns. When you are basically trying to trade, unless otherwise you are not getting more than eight percent in your trading strategy, why do that? So you basically buy and hold. That's the reason I give that uh, example. So to use that that information up to 55, 45. So if I want to go long only strategy and I'm basically trying to active trader, downloading the data, doing back testing. A blind buy gives me 55 percent win rate, so at least my trading strategy should be giving better than that. And if I want to short, I want to have much uh, bigger advantage because it's only that 45 percent of the time market goes down. So if my trading strategy also tells like, yeah, you have like uh, 55 percent win rate, I'm actually risking against, right? So I need little better than that. So that's uh, the use. That's the way I use. Yeah. So by being like active trading based, you might expect like two to three percent outperformance on against the market returns. Against the market, I mean over the, over the market. Yeah, that's the best you can do. And all this thing is going to work on paper. Like I want to produce like forty percent, fifty percent returns. No, not really possible. So it's you. Uh, but even all this active trading or whatever, if you get like four percent edge over the market. That's that's the best thing uh, you can actually hope for. No. Sir, so can I give an example for an recovery factor? Yeah. So one, one, one example I need. So which platform you are using? You are not using. 
actually, I, wa I wanted to play with the Excel sheets, but I don't think the back people can do. So what you do is you send me an email, right? I'll reply. So the, but the recovery factor. Is the simple so the value the total net profit divided by your drawdown. So your net profit, uh, like in, in your trading strategy, right? So let's assume 50 percent is your net profit of the whole uh, stuff, and your drawdown is like 20 percent. So that 50 divided by 20 is 2.5. But that's an example. So what the number doesn't hold any significance whenever you I also I don't know what is the optimal number for a recovery factor right. So when I have that doubt I go and test that in the buy and hold strategy. So I, I again perform a strategy called I want to buy nifty at every month first day and then exit do that. So I will get like 100 trades in last 10 years right so 12 months so 120 trades. So what is the factor for that for the nifty and I compare that against my back testing. So I want it to be better than the buy and hold right because I am taking all this strain of doing the back test and all this stuff. So when I have, so I, I can't actually quantify quite a few parameters like that. So if you ask me what is a good recovery factor, yeah I do not I don't have an answer. So when I do not have an answer I go and compare that against with the buy and hold. Yeah. The, no buy and hold strategy. <laughs> it is like yeah buy and hold nifty like yeah every month you are buying a nifty right. So that will give you 120 rates and it will give you uh, so 120 months right. So you would have got like profit for 65 months and you would have lost money in 50 months. Yeah and then you perform that back test that is the back test. So you compare that with your trading results and then yeah. No, no. Yeah. Uh, my question is a bit different from what you were doing. Hmm. Let us say I have back tested the system. It is showing me good results, I have gone live with it. Yeah. Now more often than not, a system at some point of time goes burst, maybe temporarily, maybe permanently. Uh, suddenly in a certain month it gives you a loss. Let us say for example in your back testing also, that situation existed that it can lose money for a month. So you run the system. Next month also it loses money, third month also it loses money. Then you realize that one of the parameters which you were using in the system due to some change in the market, maybe volatility, maybe volumes, maybe slippage cost, something has changed. So just by tweaking that particular point, your system could have been robust. My question is, as long as my system is working properly, none of us focus on the system then. As soon as it breaks down, then we break our heads. As of when a system is running, we are also running a simulated set of results. Is there any metrics? which can help me to predict that my system is probably facing a problem before I see that result on my balance sheet. Uh, is my question clear? Yeah. Right. So anything which is in your uh, back test results is from year 1 to year 10 assume. Now you are in year 11. Right. So when you are doing that year 11, so you chop off that year 1 data. Right. And then year 2 to year 11 you run or maybe chop off those 2 years. Correct. And so you keep recalculating that, and then so your outlier adjusts. Yeah, you need to do that continuous. I'm not talking about the curve fitting. I'm talking about how when to put that strategy to sleep. Uh, so by doing that on a recurring basis, right? So you are basically trying to coming out to the newest set of data. And then uh, you are, let us say year 1 to year 10 is what you tested, year 11 is what you put that system into live. Now you take year 2 to year 11 and year 11 it is facing problems, right? And then year 3 to year 12 results would have been worse than year 1 to year 10. So obviously your system is not working. So either go on tweak or stop trading this system. Yeah. a question in a different format. Yeah. Actually I had it in mind but what I was thinking was what are the factors that might cause the system to go wrong number one and that was one question. The second question was you said that having a stop loss is not going to avoid or avert any catastrophic event. 
So it may it is going to happen. It's not. I mean, it's not very that very advisable to have a stop loss. You said, but you suggested some other formula. Do you have any data to support that having this formula helps better than uh, having our original stop loss situation of a 50 percent on the downside? So your first question is when to. Okay. Broker. I'm a broker. I've been using for quite just three months. I've started trading only okay. three months. That's it. Okay. So last two months it seemed okay. I especially in the last two weeks, it seems to be gay, going haywire. Especially like uh, yesterday, there were six calls. Five of them were wrong. The last one was yeah. moderate, but then whatever it yielded was not even sufficient to cover the earlier losses. Okay. So that's sort of hitch. But that has been happening in the last two weeks. I see that in the frequent in the last two weeks. So what will cause this sort of malfunction in the system? That was the first question. No. So just because they were uh, running at uh, like let's say five percent or ten uh, percent down from your capital, uh, don't uh, get into those doubts. Say, yeah, my system is not functioning or something like that. At the same time, don't reason out. Give out a reason. Yeah, so the October market, everybody knows it's going like uh, 50 points up and again coming another 50 points down. Like that, it's doing every day. Yeah, so your system could have been a break up or break down. So. Range bound. Correct. Yeah, so it, that's what I'm selling. Goes up and comes down. Goes up and comes down. Yeah. Correct. So you could have coded your system as a breakout or breakdown system. So that. Is not working in October. That doesn't mean that you go and rate tweak your system. And again, you wouldn't have assumed that October month is going to be range bound. So you can't expect. Yes, no, I don't. Uh, I don't doubt. You know, so the, there's only one doubt. Uh, lot of people are expressing in the last three years it's lots of free money is changing the equities but again so yeah you know that from 2008 or 2009 i don't basically try to question the market yeah, i just like accept whatever the way it is yeah, but just to uh, 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 yeah don't getting disgraced you yeah, limit your losses to 2% of your trading capital in a day so at least you have like 50 you can have fun for 50 more days <laughs> And if it is more than four percent in a week, stop for another week. So you basically continue for 25 more weeks, which is like two years. So yeah, limit your losses and then take a break. So by taking a break in October 10th, right, around 10th or 15th, what I'm telling is the middle of the week. If you are already hit four percent loss, yeah, the market is behaving the same way till October end. Me, I would have avoided this uh, one two weeks. So that's that's a way that we do. So we. If the trading system is taking more than its limit, right? We stop it for a while, and then probably uh, do that. And the stop loss, yeah. So you can search a lot of academic uh, literature, uh, right? From so many trading houses or SSRM. So my favorite uh, uh, links are one is SSRN. So you search SSRN plus whatever you want to do research. SSRN plus. Uh, low dividend stocks. It will give you thousands of papers, so you can research. S S R N. Yeah. Just Google S S R N plus whatever your trading doubt. It will take you to, uh, I mean, at least a good academic literature. So to answer your question, there are like so many stop loss strategies which worked, or uh, which were tested against the original trading strategy, right? It appeared like at least 25% stop loss by putting 25% stop loss is what your original backtest. Uh, you can match with the original backtest strategy without SL. That means yeah, it will tell you that put 25% stop loss. To match the original, so if you put one percent stop loss, your back test results are going to worsen, or two percent, it will going to worsen or something like. That. To match the original results in various strategies, yeah, you need to put at least a stop loss of 25 percent, which is as good as not having a stop loss. And basically, it so happens that they trigger at extreme places, and then again the market reverses from there. <laughs> Sorry. Which one the statement that I made? Uh, 
to back test inter, no, end of the day data i can get it from uh, nsc website yeah. but say suppose i want intraday data most of the websites only give up to 90 days back data intraday but if i want historical intraday data where to get it you can buy it from nsc buy it from nsc itself yeah. uh, they give in cd's format all the tick data Oh, all the tick data we and get. And yeah, if you claim uh, that you are a student, ah. it's not so expensive. If I remember, I don't know, but it's not so expensive. But if you claim to be a professional, then they'll take you for a ride. Okay. Yeah, but yeah you can claim to be a, an academician and then get it cheap. Uh, cheap in the sense, I think, I don't have a number, but I, it might, each CD might come to you at around 2000 or 5000 bucks. Okay. This is to Dharam Raj. Dharam Raj, if you can do a barter for this data, intraday data, historical, it will be greatly helpful for all of us. Sorry, intraday data, historical, NSE, all the scripts from beginning, if you can get it, water through some means for all of us. <coughs> we can put it out on the forum. We will create a forum for this entire group, like I told you. You can put it there. Whoever has it can probably share it with you. I don't have it. Okay. And uh, I think we are running short of time now. We need to get on with it. Can, we, um, can you please take your seats? Yeah, Deepak is going to talk about uh, macro data and impact on the markets. And one uh, nice thing here is um, I requested uh, Deepak and you know today is the first day I'm meeting Deepak in person. We've never met before and I requested him. All of it was through emails and chat and phone calls and uh, Twitter feeds, Twitter uh, conversations and uh, all those questions that uh, people had doubts about in terms of uh, RBI uh, impact on the markets, IIT and things like that, you know, Deepak is an, an expert at it. So Deepak, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> 